right, hello there, thrill seekers. That was a little snip of a song called Cosmic Debris, originally by Frank Zappa. And that's what I am here to talk to you about today, a little bit of Cosmic Debris. There is a video that's been making the rounds on the internet and getting comments from people and whatever's shares and all those things. And it is from a self-proclaimed Israeli Zen master who appears to be calling for Israeli soldiers to kill without compassion or mercy. So let's take a look at the video first, and then I'll comment on it, and I'll tell you why I in particular feel like I kind of need to weigh in on this one, uh, even though I'd rather kind of ignore it. Anyway, let's look at the video. להיות לוחם על. ההבדל בין להיות לוחם על ולהיות לוחם סתם זה במיינד. תשמעו, מה שצריך זה לשמור על קור רוח ודיוק. ובמעשיות של זה זה אומר, כשאתם יורים, לוקחים את החצי שנייה השנייה לכוון, ואז לראות, ואז לשחרר. וזה כל ההבדל בין לוחמי על לאנשים שנבהלים. ויורים, ועוד שני דברים. הכי גרוע זה לראות בצרורות, לא פוגעים ומבזבזים המון תחמושת. הרי מהקנה יש צינורית שמחזירה את הגז, חלק מהגז שיוצא, להחזיר את המכלול אחורה, לפלוט את התרמיל ולהכניס כדור חדש לבית הבלייה. והצינורית הזאת היא דוחפת למעלה, והצרור הוא מעלה את הנשק, ולכן ירי בצרור הוא מיותר לגמרי. אז דבר אחד זה לכוון. לעצור את הנשימה ולראות בבודדת או בזוג. צהורות זה עוד דבר טוב. Okay. הגדולה היא להיות, לנשום, לעצור את הנשימה, לכוון, ובלי פחד להיות מדויקים ולראות. לגבי החלק השלישי של אחרי הקרב, לחזור, לנוח, להגיד הכל בסדר. לא לטחון אשמה, לא לטחון חרטות, ולא להתייסר, אלא פשוט לנסות לנוח. יהיה זמן אחר כך. כשתחזרו הביתה, נעשה עבודה. העבודה תהיה לפרוק, ולספר, ולשתף, ולבכות. הרבה לבכות. אבל לא בקרב. בקרב, ותוך כדי שאתם שם, תהיו קולים, בלי מסכנות, בלי רכים עצמיים. נסיכים ונסיכות. שלנו אתם. גאווה לאומית. לוחמי על. קחו את הזמן. דיוק, סבלנות, אורך רוח. וזה מה שיהפוך אתכם ללוחמים הכי מוצלחים שתעשו את העבודה, ומחכים לכם כבר שתחזרו הביתה בשלום. בהצלחה לכם. הכל יהיה בסדר. Alright, there you go, there's the video. Were you about to puke your brains out? I know I was. I've watched it uh, a bunch of times just to make sure I know what's in there and I can comment on it. And every time I see it, I just want to barf my brains out. First off, just one thing, because before I commented on this, I wanted to make sure that the subtitles we were seeing were actually what he was saying. And it wasn't like, you know, that... that clip they always take from the movie about Adolf Hitler where they put just funny things on the subtitles. You know, somebody was making him say things he really wasn't saying because I don't know any Hebrew. And apparently, the subtitles are mostly correct, except for one pretty crucial part at the end where he says uh, to, I think, shoot and kill without compassion and mercy. He doesn't say without compassion and mercy. Apparently, he just says without self-pity. I guess it makes some difference, because, especially because the thing that most people seem to be picking up on and getting upset about is the thing about compassion and mercy, no compassion and mercy, and he didn't really say that. But the video itself is extraordinarily disturbing, and the reason I feel like I can't ignore it is that this guy was given his Zen master title by my teacher, Gudo Wafu Nishijima. If you look at his biography on the internet, on Wikipedia, it says, 
Under the guidance of Zen master Sung San, Amon received his accreditation. Accreditation, I don't know, I'm reading this uh, so my eyes are going wonky for you, but uh, I don't know how to pronounce that word. As a meditation teacher. Afterwards, he continued on to Japan. There he joined the dojo of Zen master G.W. Nishijima of the Soto Zen order. There, Amon was trained and certified as a Zen master. Uh, from here, he continued to Pune, India, and taught Zen at, at Osho's Multiversity. Oh, that's interesting. And then he, uh, a bunch of stuff about his, his commercial products and whatnot. Okay, he, he studied and trained under G.W. Nishijima. Here's what I remember about that, uh, because I was there. Uh, there were some people who stuck around Nishijima Roshi for years and years and really learned and studied with him. Uh, people like Mike Letchford, Jeremy Pearson, Peter Roca, Taijun Saito, um, Rochelle Sherwood, uh, there, there were a bunch of people, and, and myself, who uh, practiced and studied with him. I think I saw Nisim one or two times. My guess, even though my memory is crap, is that he hung around for somewhere between a week and a month. Uh, I would say no more than a month perhaps even less than a week for all I can remember. I didn't see him much. He seemed to be, frankly, an opportunist. Uh, Nishijima Roshi had this idea that Zen was the way to bring about world peace. And he believed that bringing about peace in Israel was crucial to bringing about peace in the world. So he was very keen on minting Zen masters who could go out into Israel and spread the word. Uh, so anybody who was reasonably charismatic from Israel could get a Dharma transmission pretty easily from Nishijima Roshi at the time. It's, it's a sad thing. I once asked him why he did this uh, and, and what he expected to happen. And he said that he thought that these people would respect the meaning and profundity of being given Dharma transmission and continue to learn and practice, even though he thought they weren't really quite ready. But he also told me that he had observed several of these people and noticed that this didn't happen. And he looked into the possibility of rescinding those Dharma transmissions and found that there isn't really a way to do that. <laughs> so, so what's done is done. So you got these kind of Dharma transmitted people. So when I hear that Nisim Amon studied and practiced with and was trained by G.W. Nishijima, uh, I uh, I know what that means. He was he hung around for a little while, got his Dharma transmission, and buggered off to Israel to to start his own little. Um, I don't know what he's starting over there. I don't want to use the C word for it, but anyway, uh, there were there were some other people like that, and uh, let's stick to Nisim for now. So uh, I haven't paid much attention to Nisim's career since then. Uh, but, you know, I remember he came out with some kind of weird virtual reality Zen video game a few years ago, and then he bought an island in Greece to go uh, uh, start a ashram or some such thing on. I don't know if he bought the island or what. It just seemed kind of ridiculous, and I thought, I just rolled my eyes every time I heard new news about the guy. And, and now I see this video with its stupid New Age music in the background and its stupid bird song dubbed in and him in his robe, not even re a real Zen robe. And then, uh, you know, talking like, uh, you know, Jesus, I could do that. Zen training allows one to calm the mind and become a super soldier. Later on, there will be time for crying, lots of crying. But don't waste bullets. Don't spray them aimlessly. The government paid a lot of money for those bullets. You shouldn't waste them. You must become still and calm and serene. Like me. But I don't. <laughs> uh, 
as for the content of the message, you know, I am not going to weigh in on taking some side in the current Israeli conflict. I am old enough that I can remember the, this stuff has been going on as long as I've been alive. When I lived in Africa as a child in Kenya, Egypt was, depending on how you look at the map, two or one or two countries above. Uh, so there's like uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, but you might put Somalia in there if you wanted to. So two or three countries above us was, you know, to the north, was Egypt. And at the time that I lived there, there they were fighting with Israel. And all kinds of violence was going on. And I'm pretty sure the famous raid on Entebbe happened while either while I was living in Kenya or just after we left. Uh, but Entebbe Airport is right next door to Kenya in Uganda. So this stuff, to me, it's just a continuation of the same thing that's been going on and on and on. And to try to weigh in on whose side you're on, it's a, it's, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless because who cares? Like, who cares what side of the conflict I am on? I, I, when I see these celebrities weighing in on it, I think, yeah, like, uh, who cares? I don't care who you support, you know? I don't care what baseball team you support or basketball team you support either. I don't care, you know? Just act or play music, whatever. And then the content of the video, like, who the hell is this for? I mean, okay, it sounds like almost like he's he's trying to give instructions, detailed instructions on how to fire a gun. I'm pretty sure everybody in the Israeli army has gotten those instructions already. Uh, or maybe he's trying to say, this is the most charitable explanation I can give. Maybe he's trying to say, look, don't go out there with a lot of anger and rage and hatred in your heart. Just do your job and come back home. That is the most charitable explanation I can give of this. But it, it doesn't even sound like that to me. It, it just sounds like somebody who's got it into his head that the people of the Israel, the soldiers of Israel need to hear his message of peace and love and bullcrap. And it, it just, it, I don't know, I find the whole thing pretty disgusting. And this whole idea of using your Zen training to become a super soldier, this is an old thing that the samurai picked up on that was written about extensively by several people, including Brian Victoria, who did that book Zen at War, in which he doesn't tell the truth about Koto Sawaki, but he does tell the truth about a lot of other people in the Zen world in Japan from ancient to modern times who used Zen as a way to justify war because, you know, uh, everyone is one and everything is everything. Look, it's complicated. And I'm not going to try to solve that riddle for you. Every nation needs to have defense and everybody has to do their thing. And there's a, there's a lot of complicated elements. But the idea of using Zen to become a, so, a super soldier, you know, it's, it's like the idea of using Zen or meditation to become a super a business person or a super athlete or whatever that's not what we do this practice for and if that's the way you're using your practice that's one of the few ways you can go wrong with zen practice maybe i'll just leave it at that the fact that he was ordained by the same teacher as me is a, a major source of embarrassment and i really think that nishijima roshi um he, g he gave Dharma transmission to some real goofballs. So what does that make me? <laughs> you, you be the judge. Uh, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't look good for any of us that he did it so indiscriminately and that some of these people are out there making themselves celebrities with the Dharma transmission that he gave them that they basically ignored after they got it. They didn't care what about studying with Nishijima Roshi. They didn't care about practicing with him. They just 
off they went to do their thing, to start their little groups. And this kind of thing uh, is nothing new. This kind of thing of getting a certificate from a Zen teacher who might be giving you the certificate for a variety of reasons and then just going off and doing your own crappy thing with it is so old that even Dogen comments about it in Shobo Genzo. He, he talks about being, you know, beware of these Zen teachers who just have a, a certificate or a signed portrait from some master who reluctantly gave it to them to get get the dude off their backs, you know, and and they don't know anything about the Dharma, and he's, he's pretty clear about that stuff. So, you know, it's just it's just another one of those, just more cosmic debris. And if because he's ordained by the same teacher as me, you want to put me in that slot, well, there you go. Maybe I'm another one of the goofballs who got ordained by Nishijima Roshi. I don't know. Makes me want to rethink the whole damn thing. But I'll tell you what, my, my nephew was over here a few days ago and he asked me, did you want to be a spiritual leader? And I said, no, <laughs> no, no. I have no desire to be a spiritual leader. I wrote a book about Zen and it's a pretty damn good book. It's one of the best books out there. And then I wrote nine more books that were even better than that about Zen. So I know I'm good at writing books about Zen. But these guys who go out and get into this stuff because I want to be a spiritual leader and share my truth with the world, they make me gag. And here's an example of a guy who makes me gag. So there you go. That's my commentary on it. That's really all I've got to say about the thing. I think it's it's pretty disgusting on multiple levels. I want to say it's got nothing to do with me, but unfortunately it does have a little bit to do with me. So that's why you got a video about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to contribute to me being a goofball and making stuff on the internet, just like Nisim Amon, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are how I make my living. And uh, you don't have to support me if you don't want to support me. There you go. I don't know who'd want to support me after seeing that video. But if you still do, there's the place you can go do it. All right, we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Ziggy, what do you think of all that? That weird video. That was weird. I didn't like that video at all, did you? No, let's go out and chase cats, okay? Let's do that instead, that'll be more fun. Okay, let's go see if there's cats.